The French Pasteur Institute has revealed that a third person has now been cured of HIV after a procedure that replaces bone marrow cells with HIV-resistant stem cells from a donor. The unnamed man living with HIV received the bone marrow stem cells as part of a treatment that he was undergoing against leukemia in Dusseldorf in Germany. Although the procedure is complex, expensive and risky, it has been seen as a positive step in the search for a cure for HIV. Well, the next step would be the introduction of the HIV-resistant gene mutation in patients without resorting to bone marrow transplant, transplants. Excuse me. A lot of science there. Let's talk about this with Professor Salim Abdul Karim from Caprisa. A very good evening to you. So good to speak to you tonight. How significant a development is this in science? Good evening and a very good evening to all the viewers. So we are, have already seen the same procedure being done in two other people in which it had achieved success. So this is now the third person. So it suggests that, importantly, that the previous cases were not just once off, that we can do this repeatedly. The challenge is it's a very complicated procedure to do, and it's not one that you can just do. You've got to have a pretty much a very severe form of leukemia or lymphoma to warrant having a bone marrow transplant in the first place. But it's, it's what I call baby steps on the path to looking at how we might be able to cure people of HIV in the future. So it's, it's a long way off from being a mass rollout procedure type of situation. I think there's no prospect of it being anything more than a highly experimental procedure that will just be done in rare individuals who have a very severe form of lymphoma. Let's, let's, let's just understand that in HIV, to cure somebody of HIV is very complicated because when you get infected with the virus, the virus con converts its RNA into DNA, and that DNA goes and sits inside the host cell's DNA. In other words, the infected person has HIV integrated into their own DNA. So that's why it is so difficult to cure HIV and why no one has ever been cured naturally of HIV. Mm -hmm. And these three cases are the only ones, and they are undertaken because the cells that have this embedded DNA, they are killed and then replaced with a transplanted form of the same cells that are resistant to HIV. So you see, it's quite a complicated mm. procedure. How long and how safe a procedure is it to perform, Prof? Very difficult. And in fact, in, uh, there have been several attempts to try and do this that haven't been successful. So we only know about the three successful ones. There have been many more that have been attempted that were not successful. And the big issue is that these individuals are going to die anyway uh, because they have this uh, fatal condition. But the actual procedure involves pretty much ablating your, your entire marrow. If you think about you know, ablating means to kill. You want to really kill those cells that have the HIV, which means you're destroying your own bone marrow, and that's your reserves of your cells that enable you to make blood. Mm. So it's, it's, it's that hazardous, and, you know, patients can readily die in the course of doing this procedure. Right. Um, and I may have missed this in your earlier explanation, but yeah. what is it about leukemia being something that one is already ill with that then allows for um, the body, shall we say, so to speak, to be so, not so receptive, but be receptive anyway to this procedure? So because it involves a bone marrow transplant, you have to have a condition in which a bone marrow transplant is warranted. So because you are uh, doing a bone marrow transplant, which is very complicated, very expensive, and patients can die as a result, they have to need a bone marrow transplant in the first place. And so that's why patients with leukemia and lymphoma are the only candidates for it, because they need the bone marrow transplant anyway. It's just that we, we do the additional step of ablating the cells and then giving them a very specific kind of transplant that will 
ensure that the cells they are getting will not get infected with HIV. Uh, now I hear you, Prof. Uh, just finally, is there still hope of a, a pill, uh, an injection that could help cure HIV? Is that anything that we should even be thinking about at this point? I think it's quite important to recognize that you know, nobody has been cured of this disease naturally. So the body hasn't been able to do that naturally. So we've got no template to follow. Also, because the virus is sitting deep inside your lymphocytes, it's very hard to know whether somebody is actually cured or not. It's just it's a very complicated thing to establish. So for us to, to get to a cure means that we've got to find a way to get rid of these deep lymphocytes that have the virus. And that's been proving to be a challenge. Now, there are some new experimental approaches that look promising. But even those, we are still looking at many years from now, where perhaps a combination of injections might be able to do this. But, you know, it's not something that, you know, we anticipate will be available anytime soon. Or we don't even know it will be successful. Caprice, the director, Professor Salim Abdul-Karim, a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Thank you for your time tonight.